Well, I thought I had the microphone turned on and I didn't have it turned on. So I did quite a lot of narration during this game and it was really quite an interesting game. I got to the end and the microphone wasn't even on. So it was all, it was all silent. So kicking myself. So taking you through the game, this is a 15 minute, 10 second game. And we play white in this game. So we push through the center with the e4 and develop the knight attacking the pawn as we do. And then we attack through the center and then we capture and obviously looking for the exchange. So we take the queen off the board. King takes, so this leaves this pawn a little bit free, but I'm not a fan of this particular type of opening because it ends up being a little bit too scrappy, but we like scrappy but organized scrappy, not just a, a mess for a mess sake. So I'm hoping that the opponent doesn't know how to work the system and the, the scrappiness that is going to ensue on the board. Hopefully they're not going to work the pieces together or they're going to leave a few pieces loose. That's what I'm hoping for. So they open the pawn, well they bring the pawn down and basically I said, well, computer frowns at me taking this, this knight. But in my head, the white square bishop is the weak bishop because obviously it's on the white squares which are going to be dominated by the white pawns if the game went on. That's only my thought process, not anybody else's. And so basically that's the thought process I use. The white bishop in this game, I could say, well, this is my bad bishop taking a good knight. So that's what I used. So we grab the knight off the board. As you can see, the gauge bar doesn't like it. It never does, but I like it. You have to find things that you like doing. Whether the gauge bar says, well, you know, you, you want to be playing like a computer and do this. Well, no, I don't. I want to play like myself. So the rook takes the bishop and we develop the bishop now. So we brought the bishop through thinking, well, the knight's probably going to come here looking to take this pawn because my rook is a little bit jammed in at the moment. So we thought, well, let's bring the bishop. Could have brought the pawn up or brought this pawn up here, but I wanted to get active pieces. So I was a bit shocked at this pawn maneuver. I thought, is this blocking something? I thought it was blocking the knight's access, but this pawn is doing that anyway. And then I'm realizing, well, maybe the bishop's coming through here, looking to do something on this diagonal, or is it just simply coming and supporting this pawn here? which would be kind of a waste really. So I'm plumping for the trying to do something here. So we went and castled and they attacked our knight. Uh, not too fussed really about doubling the pawns in front because this pawn is blocking the rook's access. So it's gonna take a few moves for them to actually get towards our king. So we developed the knight, looking really for the knight to actually get up here maybe take this pawn off the ball put some pressure onto the rook so they did actually take so we captured the bishop back and then they pushed the pawn down so like we said they're probably going to try and get some sort of way of opening up towards our king but that's, that still left us with a little bit of space for the knight to come here to still continue with this maneuver if the pieces were in the same positions so we brought the knight up and they continued pushing the pawn down basically blocking the diagonal for the bishop, but at this moment in time, not too precious about that situation at all. So we brought the knight up attacking the rook and the pawn, and the rook comes down, so it's making them do something they don't want to do. Rook in the center of the board doesn't really have much of a place there. So we push this pawn up now with the idea of potentially pushing up and getting rid of the knight. The bishop attacks the knight, but in our mantra, the knights hunt the bishops, so feeling fairly comfortable about attacking the bishop. And the knight comes down and it's like I've got two pieces. It's attacking this pawn, it's attacking this pawn. So it's quid pro quo time. What do we do? So we can't defend all of them, so maybe bringing the bishop here, which has got an x-ray through to an unprotected pawn, but also an x-ray through to the rook as well. Might stand us in good stead. I believe they're probably going to take this pawn here to put a check on our king so our king can actually just attack the knight. So we plumped for the bishop attacking the knight, x-raying through like we said, brought the king up, 
and then the night attacked. So in my head I'm thinking, okay, let's make this an active king. Let's go and attack this knight. But in hindsight, I believe take, bringing the king here would have been a little bit better. It's just that it felt like I was going backwards and I, I was like being afraid of their attacks or something. And I thought, oh, get this king active. It shouldn't be a problem. So they brought the king up. Then they brought their bishop down. So at this point, we can take this pawn because it's got no protection on it. The rook comes down attacking the um, the knight. There was something that I did miss during the game, which was, excuse me, this pawn could have been taken by the bishop. But because I was so tonal visioned on, oh, we could get their bishop off the board type situation, developing our pieces, I didn't pay that any attention whatsoever. So we put a check on the king attacking the bishop and then we captured with the knight being also on the rook again making them do things they don't want to do so they pushed the pawn so for a moment there I'm thinking hey, have they made a mistake so we grabbed king captured and then we put a check on the king now at this point here I'm thinking this is like um, that's an obvious move the king moving itself away uh, but Afterwards, I looked at this and I thought, the foresight of this player is absolutely fantastic for the position that they were attempting to get. So we bring the rook up, just attacking their pawn, but also realistically looking to double up. So the king comes across to defend the pawn. We double up. Our key focal point is doubling up. Realistically... I was thinking of bringing it here, you know, bringing my king to this square. I thought, oh, let's bring it here. Then it's going to block the king from coming around this area. I think if I'd have played it again, I would have brought the king up here. Likewise, I mean, I probably would have brought the king down here in the first instance. But because the king was here, I should have moved my king there. Gage bar doesn't really care either way you know moving the king there or doubling up the rooks it's all the same so there's no major impacts to it it's just that this would have felt a lot better as we progress through the game so the king moves across i didn't really pay any mind to the king moving i'm like thinking what's he doing so we bring the rook up looking to attack the pawn and come around the back with the other rook and maybe start putting some checks on the king and they bring their rook across supporting the pawn so we capture, so at this point thinking, hey, yeah, we're, we're quids in here. But if you have a look at the tail of the tape, if I had gone for the doubling of this, my king is trapped and it would have been a checkmate. That would have been an awful checkmate. So for me, I'm thinking the foresight of this player, they must have seen this type of position early on when they were doing their king walk to actually go for the checkmate like this I thought that's quite amazing so because we took our time over it we realized that well we we don't have a leg to stand on checking the blind spots what can the opponent do to us it looks nothing you know the kings here the knights here it looks like nothing so we changed our mindset because we were going to come here looking to like you know take this pawn off and get the rook off the board but bringing the rook here, x-raying through to the king, the pawn can no longer come and attack the, um, our king. So they support, and then we can take a pawn off. And again, same situation. In the game, I actually did pick up my rook. And say, I said, oh, what's he doing? He's made a mistake. And then I realized, why is this rook here? This rook is here stopping this pawn from going for the checkmate. It can and does happen where you just forget one move earlier why a piece is in a particular position and then you lose because you've moved that piece. So we brought the rook down supporting. So this player was very clever with the manoeuvres that they were making. Focused on that checkmate. So we're supporting our pawn now just pushing it up. And now the rook's coming in attacking our undefended pawn here. 
So we did deliberate for a while and decided to push the pawn up to support. And if the knight did take, then at least our king could probably escape. So they pushed onto our rook, so we challenged their rook. And I didn't expect them to take actually, but maybe they didn't have much else to do. So we captured back, maintaining this x-ray through to their pawn. So they look like they're probably thinking, running out of moves, there's not much they can do. So brought the king down, then they brought their king, and then at this point really, pawn check, they're going to lose their knight. And at that point the opponent resigned. So again, very interesting game indeed in terms of blind spots. Looking at what the opponent can potentially do to you. Yes, I've got my big guns going up with the rooks, etc. But looking closer when you're doing your calculation at your own blind spot calculation. In this game, it really did help. So I'm really quite pleased with this game. But I'm so annoyed I didn't actually set the microphone. Good game.